When Jesus said, render unto Caesar the things that are Caesar's and unto God the things that are God's, that's kind of what we're doing this morning. <clears throat> we, uh, I believe that Jesus meant that we're supposed to be, pay our taxes, be good citizens, serve in the military if that's what, we're, that's, if that's what we are required to do. And I don't think Jesus, when he said, turn the other cheek, this is what David and I were talking about earlier, meant that for that to apply to soldiers on the field. And I also don't think when he said to feed the poor, and help the and help the uh, help those in need. I don't think he meant vote for somebody who will take money from your neighbor and give it to the poor. <clears throat> I think he. <clears throat> <clears throat> I think he meant what you guys did last Saturday to go out and serve. It's our job. It's he, Jesus taught personal charity, but now we're going to render under Caesar, and hit, and hear the political side, and uh, we had planned to have. Judge Janine go first, but she decided in the back room that her fiery style should come after David's talk about Jesus. And I, I think that's, uh, I don't want you to hold back at all, okay? All right. She's, she's one of the, she, she, she's one of the best on cable news by, by far. She's just, during the election when I would start feeling like it was going the wrong way and think I would watch her and I'd, I'd, I'd get encouraged again and, and go back and fight some more but but she's a former judge and district attorney from New York she's host of Fox News Channel's Justice with Judge Janine first female judge on the Westchester County court bench she was elected as the female district attorney of Westchester County serving 12 years. She's most known for fighting for cases regarding domestic abuse and crimes against the elderly. Young Americans for Freedom brought Judge Janine here. Emily Hensler, would you stand up? She and John Mayer and several others. But well, there she is. But last night, we were so impressed with her, uh, with her talk. We asked her to stay over. I just, there was just no way we could let her leave Liberty University without all of you hearing from her. So please welcome Judge Janine Perro. Thank you. Thank you. So, this wasn't planned, but I think it was meant to be. And it is my honor, indeed, President Falwell, to be here today. Welcome to the United States of America, where illegal aliens have more rights than American citizens. And my job is to tell you why that is not Fair, that is not Christian, and that is not the law and order that our founding fathers intended. Now, I know a little about law and order. I spent 30 years as a prosecutor, a judge, a district attorney. I am someone who has fought that battle every day where the fight between good and evil unfolds. I have seen the ugliest side of life, the pain that people go through for no reason because a criminal made the decision to target them, because a criminal decided to change their life forever. And that ripple effect goes on beyond the individual to the family to the community. And my job has always been to level that playing field. And that's what I'm going to talk about today. What I am interested in right now is making sure that you understand that the benign-sounding sanctuary city nonsense is nothing more than a criminal enclave that is teed up to create danger for the legal American citizen. Now, lest you not understand me, we're all immigrants. I have no problem with immigrants. Unless you're a Native American, don't even say a word. You're an immigrant. 
But we come here legally, and we come here with the permission of the government, and we follow the rules. But all of a sudden, the rules are gone. There is no law and order anymore. And so now you have these namby-pamby liberal mayors and governors and sheriffs who are like, oh, no, we are a Christian nation. This is not who we are. We are Christians. We let everyone in. Well, here's your answer to that. It was a sunny day, and she was walking along the pier in a place where she had a right to be. He did not have a right to be there. In fact, he had been deported five times, convicted of seven felonies, a career criminal. And she was walking with her dad. He not only had no right to be there, he had no right to have that gun. The gun was illegal, and he took that gun, and he killed her. He shot her, and as she lay dying in her father's arms, Kate Steinle said, Dad, help me, help me. There was no help for Kate. There is no help for the victims of illegal aliens who are criminals, who are deported on a regular basis in this country. And yet there is education, medication, three meals a day, translators, lawyers, everything that the illegal needs in the criminal justice system, constitutional rights so that he is protected, so that he has the presumption of innocence, so that we cannot convict him unless we prove beyond a reasonable doubt that he killed Kate Steinle. How many parents do we have to parade in front of you? to talk about their children who have been lost to illegal criminals. I'm not even talking about the people who came here illegally. I'm talking about the ones who are illegal and who commit crimes, and we still can't deport them. And so what you have now is this sanctuary haven. The man who killed Kate Steinle said, yeah, I went to San Francisco because it was a sanctuary city, because I knew they wouldn't deport me. And so what do you say to your friends who say, well, it's so important for us to have these sanctuary cities so that the illegals can work with law enforcement? I'm here to tell you that's hogwash. And I'll tell you why. He was a painter. He made cash, and every weekend, he would go and buy beer. And every weekend, he would be robbed. Never said anything. I'm the sitting DA in a county of, I don't know, about a million people. Never heard of him. Until the illegal who used to beat him up every weekend and take his money killed him with a rock, smashed his head in. Then, of course, I hear about it. It's a homicide. So they bring it to me, and I'm like, well, why, if this is happening, how come it took so long for people to come forward? For those people, and by the way, the end of the story is the guy who killed him with a rock, the illegal is in prison for life. Okay, the painter's dead. This is a classic example of the nonsense they're trying to sell you. Why didn't the painter report that the illegal was robbing him and beating him every weekend? Why? Because he was more afraid of the illegal than he was of law enforcement. They say, you know what, they don't want to be deported. That's nonsense. There's something called a U visa. I use it all the time. If you're a victim of a crime and you're illegal, we give you a U visa that Congress passed a law. You get to stay here. Your mother, your father, your sister, your brother, everybody gets to stay. We give you a U visa. I don't need this ridiculous sanctuary city. So if the illegal is not going to report what's happening 
because he's more afraid of the other illegal who's really got more rights than the illegal victim. What are we doing? What we're doing is we're perpetuating criminality and teeing up American citizens for crime. Mayor de Blasio in New York City, a number, another one of these namby-pamby liberal mayors who doesn't know what he's talking about, <laughs> says, you know, uh, there are certain crimes that we're not going to tell ICE about. ICE, Immigration Customs Enforcement. So this is how it happens. I know. I did this for 30 years. The feds say, we're going to lodge a detainer. So when this guy comes out of your jail, we want to deport him. All of these sanctuary cities are saying, we're not going to tell you when he's coming out, we're not going to alert ICE, and we're not going to hold him or detain him for you to come and get him. I mean, that's just not how it's done. It's never been done like that. So just on a technical level, we're putting our federal brothers and sisters in law enforcement in more danger by forcing them to go into that sanctuary city and look for the illegal that the local cops know is there, but their bosses won't let them report. So I have a message to cops around this country. And the message is this. We gave you a badge and a gun. We sent you to rookie school. You took an oath. You took an oath to protect the victim, an oath to follow the law, the Constitution. And in a way, you do God's work. You protect the innocent against evil and the criminal. You do not stand down. You do not refuse to work with your fellow law enforcement agencies. You do not back off when a crime is committed for some legal left-wing agenda because they want to change the demographics of this country so that the Democrats can be elected. But that's what they're doing. They don't have the right to notify ICE. And so Mayor de Blasio says, you know what, we're not going to let, we're not going to tell them anything. You know, if it's a sexual abuse conviction, big deal. Well, you know, so what? If it's drunk driving, uh, yes, yeah, so what? You know, we're not going to tell the feds about it. We're not going to let this illegal who's here illegally in the first place who's committing crimes, we're not going to tell ICE. We're not going to let him be deported. We're going we're to save him. We're going to protect him under the guise of that's not who we are. But the truth is that by doing so, you are at risk. And so now they march, and they put on their black ninja outfits, and they put on their masks, and they demonstrate. And if you recall, in Berkeley, when a conservative speaker goes out there, they can burn a building, the protest goes on for 12 hours, $100,000 in damages. Forget about they stopped the free speech of a conservative speaker. What they do is they allow all this anarchy and do nothing to stop it because there's a stand down order. They are not allowed to make an arrest. One person in 12 hours of rioting is arrested. And my source in the police department tells me it's because he wanted to be arrested. He wanted his street creds. What is happening on the street is happening on the bench. I am ashamed to say it. I've been a judge. I was an elected Superior Court judge. One of the reasons I stepped off the bench, much to my mother's chagrin, was that I'm an activist. I'm a fighter. I believe in right and wrong, and I believe in making sure that the underdog gets a fair shot. 
And what these judges are doing, as recently as yesterday in the Ninth Circuit, I call it, and many do, the Ninth Circus, they're reversed by the United States Supreme Court 87 percent of the time. All right? That tells you where they're coming from. So yesterday, a circuit court judge uh, or in the Ninth Circuit put a halt to President Trump's effort to stop the funding to sanctuary cities. Now, the idea is this. If you get a federal grant, I got loads of federal grants when I was a DA, you must comply with the law. Under the conditions of the grant, you are required to follow certain requirements, specifically uh, a section that says that you cannot prohibit the transfer of information. It's very clear. I have it on my papers here. I, when I received grants, had to repeatedly identify how I was complying with the grant requirements or I would lose the grant money. This federal so-called judge shows up and says, I'm putting a ban on that one. You don't have to comply with it. This is whatever he said it was. I don't really care. It is, it is politics that has infiltrated the bench. And that's a sad state. We're in a bad situation right now. If the very words law and order are offensive, if the protection of the criminal illegal is more important than making sure that Kate Steinle and so many others that I don't have time to talk about can't walk freely, then we got a problem, folks. So my message to you is this. You can never be silenced. They are silencing you. They are doing everything they can to make you uncomfortable, to make you feel that you are out of the mainstream, to make you feel that you are less than American or not even Christian. I mean, talk about a reverse on that one. Or that you are not even to be heard. All I want you to take from this is this. You dig down deep into who you are and what you've learned here, and you make sure that that moral core of which you are made is never silenced, is never quieted, by those who have a totally different agenda. And you will make a difference, not only to you and your family, but to this country, this great nation. God bless you, God bless this university, and God bless America. Thank you.